people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is all about the rather scary and worldwide phenomenon that is known as the evil eye. So what is the evil eye? Well, it is a part of every culture throughout the whole of the world. There isn't a single culture I really can find that doesn't have some form of evil eye superstition. And it is where people believe that you can cast evil upon someone by glancing at them. And it is as simple as that. They don't need to cast spells. They can do it mostly inadvertently. It is caused by envy and jealousy. So beware of envy and jealousy, because this is not just superstition, in my opinion. So as with always in these videos, I'm going to give you a little historical action about the history and the superstitions of the evil eye, and then we'll come round to modern witchcraft, and we'll look at how and why and where you might use protection against an evil eye. So, with that in mind, let's start with the history. The evil eye has been used by pretty much every culture. I particularly like the ancient Egyptian use of the eye of Horus. So the ancient Egyptians believed that their god Horus, who's the god of kingship in the skies, had a fight with the violent stormy Set. And Set ripped out either one or two of Horus's eyes. Set was overcome by Horus and he took his eye back and then it was healed with the help of others. Horus then gave this eye to Osiris and its revivification helped Osiris live through the afterlife. That is the reason why the eye of Horus is considered such a protective good luck charm. The ancient Egyptians used their eye of Horus from as old as the 2600 BC, which is up to 5,000 years ago. And they used them as an amulet or a charm, a protective against evil. This Eye of Horus charm seems to have moved through Syria, down into Africa, and across the Mediterranean to Greece and Turkey and beyond. And it is known throughout the world. 600 BCE, the Chalcidians had these wonderful drinking cups emblazoned with the symbol of an eye, which were sweetly called eye cups. And these were considered protective a charm against evil. It is a very prevalent symbol in the Eastern Mediterranean and particularly known in the country of Turkey, where these are called Nazars, which is a rather nice name, isn't it? These evil lie charms are apotropaic, meaning that they deflect or turn away the evil eye from you. They don't stop it, they just push it somewhere else, you know, they mirror it back. Glass beads were invented about 600 BC and these were turned into evil eye charms from almost the get-go. One of the easiest colours in glass is blue. However, there is a very prevalent attitude throughout the world that those people with blue or green eyes are more adept and more likely to cast the evil eye upon you. And so therefore, they use the blue nazar to reflect back those blue or green evil eye curses because as a blue or green eye is more likely to cast an evil eye spell, a blue or green eye charm is more likely to deflect it. There was varying ideas and ideologies about how to deal with the evil eye superstition. Muslims, although orthodox Muslims look down on this, you would say the words, blessings of God, tabarak Allah, three times, a bit like when we say bless you after a sneeze, keeps the evil eye away. The Turkish nation used to build them into their houses, so you'll often see them above the doors. Or the Mediterranean boats often have those eyes on the front of the prows of their ships. It's evil eye, not to make their ships see through the waves, which is what I always thought they were, but to protect them from the evil eye. The Caribbean, particularly Trinidad and Tobago, has something called mal yo, which is, comes from the French mal yeu, meaning bad eyes. Mal yo is a uh, evil eye curse, and you can commit ya mal yo, or you can receive mal yo. It was considered that mal yo was caused by envy and jealousy, and therefore your children were very susceptible. 
because if you looked at a beautiful child, and aren't they sweet after all, with envy and jealousy, which often happens, let's face it, then this can cast an evil eye onto them. Especially, they believed that patting the head of a child also caused the evil eye to be cast upon them. Children often wore uh, bracelets with evil eye charms on them. Uh, they were placed at the front of their houses and it was this Malio blue, as they called it, this wonderful bright blue that you see, that was used as a protection against Malio. The Spanish called it Mal de Olio, and when they went across to South America, they passed those superstitions through to those nations. The Indians also believe that babies and children are particularly susceptible. And you know that beautiful coal eyes that they put around their babies and children? This is believed to deflect and keep off an evil eye curse. It's eyes for eyes. And don't they look charming as well? There are other ways to cast off the evil eye. You might have seen this symbol, the pointing of the two index and middle finger. <laughs> that is said to avert the evil eye. Although the Italians used the pointing of the horns and that apparently averted the evil eye. It's a bit ACDC that, isn't it? My way to hell. Um, anyway, that's what the Italians like to do, and it's particularly prevalent, especially in southern Italy, to use the symbol of the horns. The Greeks had a rather wonderful way to tell if you've been cursed by the evil eye. They would take some of their beautiful olive oil and place a drop of it in a glass of water. If the bead of oil still floats upon the water, then there is no evil eye present. However, if the bead drops through the glass of water, then sadly, you have been afflicted. The wonderful blue and green nazars that are sold prolifically through the Turkish bazaars and on Etsy. There is one main superstition for them, that you hang them wherever you're going to hang them, round the necks of your babes, uh, on your new car, they're very good for travelling cars, on your household, above the doorway especially. But when you see that this nazar has become damaged, or it is cracked, or split, or chipped, this means that it's been doing its job and has averted an evil eye away from you. It has now lost its power and its strength. So you must take your Nazar and bury it with its evil eye problems and replace it with a new one to carry on the protection because you definitely need it if it's cracked and chipped. Today, the Nazar charm is very popular in this concentric circle. Meghan Markle wears them on jewellery and has been known to quite a lot. Whether she believes in it, I have no idea. Uh, shout out to Meghan if you do. Let me know in the comments below. But are they, these Nazars, just superstitious nonsense? Well, this is my opinion and it's something that I have researched quite a long time. It is well known, and not just by me, but by many, that people can cast an evil eye. And this evil eye will affect you. It can affect your health, it can affect your luck, it can affect you how you work, or how you uh, go about doing certain tasks. Um, it can also affect children and bring them down. So there is an issue with the evil eye. Whether it is caused consciously or unconsciously, it's also true. People can cast an even eye with a build-up of jealousy and envy will create this sort of bubble of negative energy, which if then they direct it at, say, your new car, for example, that can have you know, grave implications on your new car. These spells are difficult to deflect or even know when they're coming. As a witch myself, I have a general protective aura about me and protective spells which will deflect all of this negativity away from me. So I have no real need for the evil eye counter charms. However, I do love them, hence why I've got this rather beautiful plate here, which I bought not so long ago because I saw it and I couldn't resist and use it every single day. And it hasn't chipped yet, unlike all of my plates which chip all the time. I'm a bit clumsy, you know. Well, in that case, how does it work? Well, this is actually all to do with colour magic. Colour magic is about vibrational energy from the colours that you use. 
green and blue spectrum of colours are the highest in vibrational energy. When they are drawn around a white concentric circle, it is the battle between the energy of the white and the energy of the blue or green that forms this sort of strong symbol and this can be used as a symbol of deflection. It doesn't cast it back onto the person, but it does cast it aside so that any evil eye curse that is aimed directly at you cannot pass through. So you can take, I mean, the best place to use an evil eye protective symbol is actually on your chest, because this is where most curses are um, consciously or unconsciously aimed at. A necklace or pendant is the best place to wear one. I would thoroughly recommend you having them in your car, especially a brand new car, because brand new cars excite jealousy and envy. And where you create jealousy and envy, you can create, without realising it, an evil eye curse. So, in modern witchcraft, I very much recommend you go and use one. They are not all powerful though so they you know things will slip past them but they are pretty good at first line of defense but how do you know if you've had the evil eye cast upon you this is a much more difficult question to answer um you generally need uh specialist help from someone such as myself who'll be able to find out and turn it from you or you can sometimes feel it you can feel somebody else's energy on you Either way though, however, trying to get rid yourself of the evil eye is a completely different issue and possibly a whole video in itself. I can only suggest that you contact a professional such as myself in this instance if you feel that you've got the evil eye upon you. It's a nasty one, I know. My Patreon coven meeting is coming up and this month we're doing a thought transference. It's so exciting. I am going to teach my group how to mind read. Now, you might think, oh God, that's ridiculous. I'm sure they do too. But what my coven group haven't realised yet is that I have seen every single one of them mind read so far during our coven meetings. So I'm looking forward to showing them they're wrong. Do come and join us. We do something new every single month. Go to patreon.com forward slash Virginia Metherill to find out and come and join us. You've still got time. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know with a like and a subscribe because that really helps my channel. And I will see you with all your brand new Evil Eye Charms up in a few days. <laughs>